Hey everybody, this is Landry with Evoke Bike, and I am here with the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Hardly. Known as Brendan Hausler. Uh, here to talk about some of your questions from the Discord. Yes. Um, if people aren't yeah, in the so Discord, have, they need to uh, be in the Discord. Yeah, if you're not in the Discord and you want your questions talked about on the podcast, then join the Discord and ask in the Discord Dojo thread. And we will, uh, if it's a good question and something that we think we can have a good conversation about, we will answer it. And definitely just get on there to ask ask all the dumb questions. I wish this had existed when I had first started cycling because all of my dumb questions went to one person, Mike Minerva, who has mass amount of emails from me with ridiculous stuff. So as long as you can check your ego at the door, there is a wealth of knowledge there and a ton of people willing to help. And that's what makes, there's 400 people in there. So you're not going to get just our answers. You're going to get an answer from Joey Pants in New Jersey and then Brian in Texas and Bodo in Ohio and just people all over the place. So highly recommend you join that community. And what are we talking about today? What's the fur? What's the topic? Do um, <clears throat> so today we are talking about uh, placement of VO2 max training before uh, long gravel races. So the question is, where in the race calendar would you place VO2 max training um, to be competitive in 100 to 200 mile gravel races? Traditionally, as the blocks right before the race, or would you place them further uh, further out from the race and put more event-specific blocks, such as high tempo or threshold, uh, in the blocks right before the race? I want to, like, this is a really good question, and there's a lot of uh, nuances. Eh, not nuances to it, but what's your initial thought when you read through that? Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I think we need to delineate from my take on it is honestly, you don't really need to do, even if you're training for long gravel races, you, sh you don't really need to do much uh, tempo or sweet spot. Um, anyways, I think most of your training should be either at or above your uh, lactate threshold. Because um, the main thing to be ready for 100 to 200 mile gravel races is just your your endurance and if you can go out and do long endurance rides at, for five six hours at 70 percent of ftp i mean naturally you're also going to be able to ride at tempo for a really long time as well because you're going to be used to putting out a lot of work and and kilojoules um not saying that there's not a place for it but i would just question the usefulness of it um especially if you're doing a lot of gravel races well you're naturally going to get it from that anyways i don't know if i could have said it better that i was actually so just so everybody knows we did not pre-chat about these and i was actually putting some examples in here of in my head so i have two races that immediately come to mind that are great for this gravel worlds which is 150 miles and gravel nationals which i have a three the first three hours before i flatted um and I always go back to James Walsh, who was a guest on the podcast, who messaged me and was like, hey, man, you're one of the only people that's talking about VO2 max work for gravel races. These are really long. And I feel like it's really important. Why do you why is everybody just saying ride sweet spot? So what, exactly what Landry is talking about, actually time above FTP for gravel worlds, which was a seven and a half hour race when I came in fifth was. An hour and 28 minutes above threshold, six, 17 of which were anaerobic, so full blast, but it's a ton of VO2 max time. Now, you might be saying there's no possible way to do that. You couldn't go out and do five by, what would that be, like five by 40 of VO2 max? No, but it's all of the surging and gravel that happens. And we're also talking to you as if you want to be in the front group. If you just want to go finish, and you're starting the race and it's more of an event for you to ride, you know, I would still recommend you to train the same way so you can ride your fastest through it. You know, you don't, just like Lander said, you don't need to go out and do all of this tempo and sweet spot work. That's actually, when I first read this, that was the biggest, 
not error, but that was the biggest misconception this athlete has that it's going to be a lot of high tempo, low threshold. I had 54 minutes of tempo. I had 29 minutes of sweet spot. I had 34 minutes of FTP and I had an hour and 28 of VO2 max. And then there's a ton of endurance and a ton in zone one because you're in a bike race. You're trying to conserve as much as possible. So what would you say, Landry, as to, so we kind of hit the question from the second part first. What do you think to the part where you said, where would you put VO2 max training if you want to be competitive? Traditionally, it's r- right before the race. Um, what's your kind of, let, and it's hard because we don't know this person. There's a lot, like this is a very general question to ask, but let's say that for ease of dates, let's say the race is April 1st. So like, what would you think of February, March, I guess is a good February, March, April. Yeah. I would say definitely before the race leading up, right leading up to the race um, is probably when you'd want to do it. But I think you should be doing it at certain times year round. Um, I mean, not like early winter, but yeah, for sure. When you're in that race build two or three months out from your your target races, then absolutely you would want to be doing the high intensity um, stuff above VO2 max because, you know, the time to exhaustion, if you have good endurance and you're out doing big rides, like you should be, if you're training for gravel, you're naturally going to have a good time to exhaustion, but you want to do the course as fast as you can. And in order to do it faster, you need to train above threshold to increase your zones. Um, It's not like, Oh, I'm going to train at, uh, I'm going to do longer sweet spot intervals because I want to be able to ride for 250 miles, even though my race is only 200 miles. It's like, no, you want to be able to do the 200 miles as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I would definitely agree with that. I think sometimes it's, especially if it's early in the season, you know, people will, all you always hear, I don't want to peak too soon. I don't want to be. I don't want to be January superstar, but if you have a really early race, you need to be doing some of these efforts earlier than some of your friends who might not be doing a big race until June. And you need to be nimble with the training calendar of when you're going to put in these efforts. And I think you're exactly right. If you wait to just, I I agree that they should do them the block before, you know, that's really going to get you teed up for the race. But if you're waiting just until the block before, I think you've probably waited too long and you want to be hitting this, you know, two blocks before. So like, let's call it eight weeks to six weeks before you're doing a little bit of it. And then maybe focusing on it a little bit more specifically, you know, four weeks out and three weeks out. And then you're still right. You're still getting some good rides. in in those last two weeks, you don't need to do this crazy long taper, especially for a super long event like this. You know, people will say, oh, I've got this 150 mile ride, so I'm going to rest the whole week before. That is probably the worst thing you could do. So the longer, you know, I'd posted uh, like a recap from Masters Nationals and there were two or three people that emailed me and like, wait, I froze the screen and looked at what you did the week before. Like you did a four hour ride three days before. And I was like, yeah, I mean, this is going to be granted. That's a very normal duration for me, but the race was going to be two hours and 30 minutes. So yeah, I'm good to keep riding like that. So I think that would be the best place for him to put those. And then as he mentioned, event specific blocks for something so long, (laughs) the event specific thing is a ton of KJs, a ton of work. It's going to be a ton of everything. It's not high tempo, low threshold. So come prepared. Landry said it. Just two minutes ago, if you're doing big gravel, you need to be doing, and you want to do well, you need to do some big weekend rides. Five hours is a staple for you. You probably want to do a seven hour ride at one point. Um, If it's going to take you eight hours, you might want to do an eight hour ride like four weeks before, just so you know what it's like. I mean, the difference between riding five hours and seven hours is big. Going to eight hours is very big. It's a really long day. And you want your... Then, I mean, we could go down a rabbit hole here. Then you want your make sure your gut can actually handle and process food and what are you going to eat? And you don't want to get out there and be five and a half hours in, never having done a ride that long. I mean, like, man, I feel sick from all this sugar that I brought. I should have brought X, Y, and Z. 
So there's so many little things that you need to rehearse and practice. And those little things matter just as much as the power and watt training. So, um, oh, and then my gravel nationals example is actually very much the same. So it's a smaller time window, but it's an hour of recovery, 26 minutes of endurance, 18 minutes of tempo, 10 minutes of sweet spot, 13 minutes of threshold, 35 minutes of VO2 max, eight minutes anaerobic. So just highlights, if you want to be, and I was in the front group of eight with like Joe Schmaltz, two of his teammates. Um, oh man, who else was up there? And like three or four other guys. And then I flatted. So that was fun. Anyways, um, I think we, any other thoughts on this one? Um, yeah, I would just, to summarize, I would say, even if you're doing a race, a gravel race where you might be spending a lot of time at sweet spot, um, that you shouldn't necessarily be training at the zone. I think you should focus on doing big rides and building up a lot of work in KJs and then focus on raising your zones and building, um, building that top end and then the time to exhaustion will take care of itself regardless of whatever zone you're riding in if you can go out and ride for eight hours with no fatigue i mean you're going to be able to ride at sweet spot for a long time as well um so just even if you're doing a long gravel race keep it mostly polarized would be my opinion cool Thanks for coming to Discord Dojo. Don't forget to submit your questions and we'll talk to you soon.